in the valley of a perpetual dream. This is how it was when Mary and Percy Bysshe Shelley moved into a house in Lerici in 1822. Mary hated this place, but Percy loved it, and the forebodings were everywhere, hidden though like snakes, in waking visions, nightmares, and precognitive dreams. Seven days after their arrival at Lerici, Shelley was out one night on the terrace. His friend Edward Williams was there too, as Mary later recounted. Shelley has seen the figure of himself, which met him as he walked on the terrace, and then the other Shelley asked him, how much longer you mean to be content? According to modern science, it was a case of autoscopy, and the poet saw his doppelganger, a term that was not known at that time by Mary Shelley. Autoscopy is defined as an experience of seeing one's body in extracorporeal space as a double without disembodiment, experiencing the self as localized outside one's physical body boundaries. The double is seen from the habitual egocentric visuospatial perspective and is usually seen as a harbinger of bad luck. President Abraham Lincoln is said to have personally witnessed his double self after his first election. His wife, Mary, was certain that the doppelganger foreshadowed bad news. Lincoln was fatally wounded in 1865, shortly after winning the second term, leaving the whole Ford's theater paralyzed and Mrs. Lincoln on her knees. Shelley's autoscopy experience was an omen of impending doom as well. The theory of parallel universes supports the idea that we all have doppelgangers. Edward Williams's journal also records some other psi phenomena. One night, Shelley and his friend Edward were talking on the terrace by moonlight when a ghostly apparition of the deceased daughter of Byron and Mary's sister, Claire, appeared. Shelley grasped me violently by the arm and stared steadfastly and declared that he saw as plainly as he saw me a naked child, Allegra, rise from the sea and clap its hands as in joy, smiling at him. And suddenly, Shelley pointed out to the sea, there, there it is again, he said, as he was looking at a little naked child rising from the water, smiling and pretty joyful. June the 25th, in the middle of the night, Shelley, terrified Mary to death, screaming in her room that he had dreamt of their friends, the Williams. They had walked naked into his room, their skins torn and blood-stained. And in his dream, Edward spoke to him, saying, Get up, Shelley. The sea is flooding the house, and it's all coming down. Next morning, the poet told Mary that he had recently experienced many visions. Later, those dangerous waters in Shelley's dream started to rise in real life. July 1st. Shelley is taking Don Juan, that badly constructed boat, down the coast to Livorno with Williams. July the 8th. Bad weather, but Shelley, Williams, and the 18-year-old seaboy Charles are determined to come back to Lerici and to Mary, who was feeling so depressed after her latest miscarriage. The beginning of the end is always today. In the midst of the storm, the poet thrusts Keats' poems into his pocket, realizing it is the night when the water will appear another world for all of them, turning the moon's reflection into debris from a sacrificial fire. No more secrets of nature for Shelley to divine. Another notorious Mary is left on her knees under the portrait of her dead husband. That same night, Lady Mount Cashel, a highly cultivated and refined friend, dreamt of Shelley, his face pale and melancholy, saying mournfully, I shall never eat more. 
Little did she know that Percy Bysshe Shelley was now dead. August 16th. We dug up your cremated body, but your heart refused to burn. I never wanted but your heart that's gone. You have nothing more to give. Surely something resides in this heart that is not perishable. And life is more than a dream.